She meshed the visionary talent of Ridley Scott and the fantastic acting quality of Michael Douglas into an international crime thriller. You get this stylish, powerful film, Black. NYPD detective Nick Conklin is a seasoned cop under investigation for corruption when he and his partner Charlie Vincent are thrust into the apprehension of a cold-blooded killer named Sato. Tasked with escorting him back to Japan, Conklin and Vincent are unwittingly duped and accidentally deliver Sato into the hands of his own gang. Now forced to be only observers in the investigation headed up by the Osaka police, the two New York cops take it upon themselves to crack open the underlying counterfeiting plot and the war between Sato and his former Yakuza boss, Sugai. Assisted by the very by-the-book detective Masahiro Matsumoto and the beautiful club hostess Joyce, the American cops chase Sato through Osaka's dangerous underworld, but at a cost neither of them ever anticipated. Now, Detective Nick Conklin must fight to recapture not only the criminal he lost, but his own honor. She released in September of 1989, Black Rain ended up being a very important film in Ridley Scott's career that a lot of people don't seem to take note of because not since Alien had he had a financially successful film. All three movies he had made since then, Blade Runner, Legend, and Someone to Watch Over Me, all bombed at the box office, making it a full decade since Scott had had a very successful film. But thankfully, Black Rain on a $30 million budget brought in $134 million at the box office, making it Scott's most successful film up until Gladiator. And Scott became attracted to the project, one, with the opportunity to work with Michael Douglas, which, of course, who wouldn't? And with the prospect of working in Japan, filming there, dealing with the subject matter that the film had, obviously you could see a lot of stuff from Blade Runner, the whole multinational, multicultural type of thing, a lot of the aesthetics from it, that he really kind of had a bit of an influence from that already. And Scott had already worked in New York because of his uh, time doing uh, Someone to Watch Over Me. So it was really kind of a ultimate type of mesh of a lot of different things he had done before. And the thematic material of the film entirely capitalizes on the Japanese culture to the extent that in Japan, Black Rain was actually nominated for Best Foreign Language Film. Even though a lot of American critics were trying to look at the film and thought it was sort of racist or something like that, that they were stereotyping the Japanese culture, but obviously the actual Japanese people saw the film as a very strong tribute to their culture and their diversity and everything and that's very much a testament to the great screenwriting in the film and how Ridley Scott and everyone else in the film really injected the film with so much texture and substance and heart and soul too and the main thematic underlying tones of the film is very much that East versus West that is sort of meshing and clashing between the two different styles that the New York cops of Conklin and Vincent are kind of a bit more streetwise type of guys who just kind of play things a little bit uh, more loosely and they play things a little bit more rough and tumble and they kind of cut corners here and there and they go a little bit more roguish because the Japanese cops are being very stoic. They're very strict. They follow a very straight and narrow type of thing. Very procedural all the way to the ends of the earth. So there's this clash of like these guys who just... They're very much motivated by their passions. Conklin and Vincent are very much motivated to right the wrongs that they've kind of uh, been involved with, that they've been kind of tricked, and they try to want to go along and help out and try to crack this case themselves, but they're being kept at arm's length. So it's just constant sort of tension and friction in this uh, way things are not quite meshing. But as the film progresses, that you eventually see how these characters begin to learn and adapt between one another that Conklin learns from other characters in the film to sort of mold himself and change himself a little bit, try to work together and whatnot, trying to come together and compromise a little bit and try to work together cohesively instead of being so friction filled and just a great sort of dynamic in the film that you just get that great sense of both cultures and with so much depth and, uh, 
perspective and everything in context and it just flows through so well because of how well everything is so well written in the film between the characters and the storylines and the emotion of the whole film it all just comes together in such a marvelously fascinating type of package as you just see the culture of Japan and everything in such a interesting light and the main crux of that very much is through the character of Detective Sergeant Nick Conklin in the film because he sort of exists on this looming shadow of corruption that he's under investigation for possibly stealing money, being involved with other corrupt cops and various other things. So there's always this sort of uncertainty with the character going throughout the film that certain moments it tips its hand one way and then it tips it back the other way. So there is a definite story arc with the character that threads through and as he develops and gets closer to other characters and just develops relationships, it very much becomes a much more purposeful sort of uh, background in the film and whatnot. So this thing that just is very much part of the character that very much brings a much more depth, brings much more detail, brings certain levels of emotion to the character that Michael Douglas absolutely positively delivers a tremendously excellent performance in this film. I just loved everything he brought to the character. Obviously, Michael Douglas is a very charismatic actor that brings a lot of different qualities to some amazing characters throughout his whole career, but as Conklin, he does bring that sort of cynical wit and whatnot that the guy has a certain level of humor that's a little bit jaded or whatnot because he's a long-time seasoned New York cop, seen a lot of things, and very much has that jaded perspective that nobody really kind of trusts him. There's always that kind of gray area of New York that he exists in. So this uh, is a very interesting character that brings a lot of texture to this very gritty sort of kind of bullish type of character that kind of goes against the grain, charges into different scenarios, especially in Japan, where things are, like I said, it's a little bit more stoic, a little bit more straight-laced and whatnot, and kind of follow rules or get out. And he's very much a guy kind of plowing through all that type of stuff. But not in sort of a cheap sort of action movie type of way. It's very much a very dimensional and purposeful type of thing with the character that everything is very much built up and weaves through organically with the characters to be very satisfying and very poignant with everything that's going on in the film. And Douglas just adds so many interesting layers to the character that you definitely see as the film goes along and things get fleshed out we get a little deeper beneath the surface of the character that you just see just great moments of this character as things take darker turns in the film things become much more personal with him you see both the sorrow and the grief that he has in certain moments when things go very very much awry and the intense physicality, the just the raw emotion that he just unleashes at certain points. You just see so much great stuff from Michael Douglas in this film that just like, it's almost signature his type of thing that just brings everything into such a great package with such a fantastically written character that is vi vitally entertaining to the whole film and very, very compelling and interesting. It's just great seeing this character just weave through this type of storyline in this type of culture and whatnot. Just everything he brings with this character and how it's presented and how everything comes together is immensely satisfying. I just enjoyed everything he had to do in this film. I just love the character too. Just like everything's just there perfectly. I thought it was just fantastic. And I just think it's great how the film just focuses the character forward as the narrative goes along things just become more personal things become high, much more higher stakes and just Douglas delivers it all perfectly tremendously I thought he just did spectacular work in this film and he's backed up by a fantastic supporting cast first off Andy Garcia is an absolute joy in this film he just brings so much flair and charisma to the character of Charlie Vincent. A little bit of theatricality, a little bit of humor. He's a little bit younger character, so he's not quite so jaded or quite so uh, gruff around the edges. He's very much kind of a slick type of guy, just like, complete total life of the party. And just I just love the sequence, uh, the scene later on in the Japanese nightclub where uh, Masa is kind of feeling a little down and whatnot, that he didn't really kind of trust these guys earlier when things looked a little bit shady. And Charlie just kind of brings him in and just has this great uh, sequence where, uh, which was totally Andy Gar Garcia's idea to kind of build that type of camaraderie, build a bond between these two characters of Masa and Charlie, where they start singing the uh, Ray Charles song and just like, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Just Andy Garcia is so good in this film, just like 
just so colorful, vibrant type of personality and brings just a great counterbalance to uh, Conklin's a little more, like I said, gruffer type of uh, cynical type of uh, personality that he brings forth. So Charlie's a little bit more, a little bit more lighter. Kind of, it kind of gives things a little bit more of a, a perspective, a little bit more of an optimistic tone to things. While Conklin's a little gets a little bit more uh, harsher and a little bit darker and a little bit more um, heat or whatnot. Charlie can kind of back things off and cool things off and just be a bit more of a ambassador in certain ways. So it's like it's 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 a great pairing. These two. Uh, Michael Douglas and Andy Garcia have fantastic chemistry in the film. And when the film takes a darker turn for the character of Charlie Vincent later on, that you really definitely feel the emotion that Ridley Scott really wanted the audience to feel. Even if you've seen the film time and time before, you still, because of the execution, how Ridley Scott directs it, how the music works, everything is still a powerful sequence. And I thought just it wouldn't have worked quite as well if Andy Garcia wasn't such a lively, fantastic talent, adding, adding so much quality and dimension to this character and just making him such a immensely likable character. And there is a very strong performance by Kate Capshaw as the character of Joyce who projects this alluring confidence, this very sophisticated type of woman who is a, sort of a hostess in a certain way, this woman in Japan that is always running into Conklin at the nightclubs and kind of has these sort of connections to the uh, Japanese criminal underworld or whatnot. So it's this kind of character in that type of middle ground gray area, this character who is always uh, kind of little here, little there. And it's a very interesting progression with this character to see how she uh, deals with the character of Conklin, who's uh, very much a gaijin, a foreigner slash barbarian. And just... Uh, such a great chemistry between Capshaw and Douglas. They just like they spark off very, very, very well in the film, and just because she projects so much strength in her performance, that you really get this thing that there is a certain respect. There's very much this woman who's not just going to fall over for this character of Conklin. That she is very much this person that stands up, stands up tall. She has a lot of self-respect for herself, and just like it's a very good character, and she just puts on such a great performance as. Pretty much what Ridley Scott referred to her as a bad girl with a good heart. That she is kind of a girl that's a little bit edge, a little bit kind of doesn't mind a little danger or whatnot. But she she got her heart in the right place when things come push to shove or whatnot. When things come a little bit more more of a a pressure type of decision she has to make, she really kind of sides on a better side of things than kind of going along and trying trying to be on the side of this all this shady type of dealings in Japan or whatnot. So. Capshaw does a fantastic performance. I thought she just really kind of radiated something very special on screen. Just fantastic quality that she brought. Great presence. Everything that she had, I thought was absolutely spectacular. And the now late Ken Takakura, who passed away in November of 2014, I believe, also does a great performance in this film as the character of Masahiro, who is the Japanese detective assigned to Conklin and Vincent on their stay in Japan. And... He adds in the right levels of nobility and sense of honor with his character. That he very much is a reserved type of person who kind of lives in his own little shell. He doesn't kind of go against the grain, doesn't speak out, doesn't stand out. He just very much follows the path of procedure and everything else. Chain of command. He's very much the guy straight and narrow. Doesn't go outside the lines. Very much the polar opposite of Nick Conklin. But it's very interesting to see how this character progresses and develops as the film goes along, that he slowly begins to trust his partners, uh, Vincent and Conklin, as things kind of progress and it starts to kind of adapt and learn how these guys work and kind of becomes more emotionally bonded with them and just kind of brings something a little bit more out slowly and gradually with his character to, to such a fantastic type of satisfying resolution with this character at the end of the film just like I was just so happy at the end of this film just seeing how these characters progressed and where they came to and how they kind of bonded and merged together and whatnot I think Ken Takakuro just uh, uh, pretty much almost a legend in Japanese film that he just uh, added so many great qualities and was such a great representative of the Japanese culture in this film just adds so much fantastic and admirable qualities to this character and he just showcases so much integrity and heart with this character eventually showing the strength of Masahiro by the end of the film I thought it was just a fantastic piece of work 
absolutely made the film so much stronger having this counterpart to the New York cops to just show such a great com camaraderie and development and just like both cultures really kind of meshing and coming together between the characters of Conklin and Masahiro just like works so well and Yakasudo Matsuda does a great job in this film too as the character of Sato, the main villain of the whole film. I just thought he just added so much great things because apparently he did have a comedy background which I think aided a lot and just making the character very theatrical and expressive and very very much a very memorable type of character. They does so many things are just like add so much flavor and character and colorfulness with the character of Sato that you're just attracted to this character in so many different ways that it makes him such a magnetic personality but Yasuda just brings the menace with this character that you definitely feel threatened by his presence that as soon as he comes on screen in the film just you just feel a presence with this guy that because he has that certain sense of theatricality that he adds something more to it that you feel something with his character every time he walks on that he's very cunning he's very intelligent and very dangerous too and sadly Matsuda did pass away shortly after the American premiere of the film because he was suffering from stomach cancer throughout the whole filming of Black Rain which no one was aware of and it was a very sad loss, but this is a very fine performance to go out on. He really made the other end of this film that you really have to, you can have great protagonists, but if you don't have as strong of an antagonist, it doesn't really work as strongly. And we have someone that doesn't have a whole ton of screen time, but every time he does show up, he delivers something very special and unique and memorable. That is what makes the film so much stronger in that type of realm that he added so much to it and you just love when the film progresses and gets to the climax and you see the characters of Yisato and Conklin battling it out and you just, you're just feeling it that you're very much invested in it because they're such strong rich characters portrayed by such great actors in this film it just sells everything and just it's just a testament to all the acting qualities all the writing the direction everything that makes it so satisfying by the end of the film I thought everyone in this cast just did an absolutely amazing job through and through. Everything was solid, great gravitas from so many supporting characters. I thought everyone just did tremendous work in this film. And of course one reliable thing that you can always expect from any Ridley Scott film is the absolutely amazing cinematography and I thought Black Rain looked absolutely stunning. Started off by cinematographer Howard Atherton, but completed by Jan DeBond, who also shot Die Hard and later The Hunt for Red October, and later directed Speed. The film just bursts. I love it first in New York that you really get that sort of grim, gray, sort of gritty feel of New York that Ridley Scott was very much inspired by the French Connection to really kind of capture the spirit and the the life of New York and just everything looks spectacular in there. You get that great contrast of sort of the warm daylight and sort of the colder aesthetics of New York in certain places when it's raining or when they're in the meatpacking district. Everything just has a great sort of tonal sense about itself. When you use all these interesting color temperatures to really kind of evoke a certain mood, a certain atmosphere about things, but obviously when they get to Japan there's just some absolutely gorgeous visuals in this film. I mean, just the neon streets, all the, the great neo-noir nighttime type of stuff. It's just classic Ridley Scott. It's like, yeah, this is exactly the, that extension from Blade Runner, that same type of thing is exactly perfectly there, all in living color. It looks stunning, just seeing the neon lights and everything and just the smoke and the grit and all the, the vibrant colors on display in these type of areas, environments and everything. Oh man, I just, I just melt on that type of visuals. But you just get some, even in tears, there's some just great, perfect noir type of type of things with the Venetian blinds and the blue light coming through or how really Scott really said on the commentary that he had used been known so much for that sort of the moving fan with the light coming through it to create that sort of sense of moving light as that type of aesthetic and whatnot and he 
kind of realized after this film that this is being copied by so many people that I they, I can never do this again. But Scott's the master of it, and he just uses it. He's the originator of it. He just makes it look so absolutely immaculate on screen. Just adds so much flavor. It just adds so much mood and atmosphere to this film. Just like all these textures and patterns that he throws the light on on screen with his cinematographer is just like man it just looks absolutely just stunning to me it just looks spectacular to my eyes i just loved how this film looked and even when you get outside of the urban areas and whatnot there's still these great beautiful visuals just the areas in the end of the film where they're in the countryside and everything just like everything still just looks absolutely beautiful in this film from one scene to the next Every single environment is just shot and lit with such great, great stuff. I mean, how the camera work moves and just composes everything. Just like there's so much great theatricality and sense of cinema in this thing. It just blows me away. This is one of the best looking films I've ever seen. And just like really, Scott never fails to make a film that just looks absolutely a feast for the eyes. And this film just, I love it so much. It just captures that neo-noir sense so very well with so many other different types of colors and textures or whatnot just captures japan and new york and so many other things so beautifully they shot in tokyo and osaka they shot new york and california so there's a lot of different things going on that ends up meshing so well with the production design with the cinematography everything that they do just looks absolutely mind-blowingly awesome to me and you get even this step beyond that with Hans Zimmer's score in this film. I just, man, I have got to own this score. This thing is just spectacular that Hans Zimmer, we all know him was great, but there's just something about earlier Hans Zimmer stuff. There's so much more color to what he did. There's so much more nuance to what he did because a lot of stuff now is very verbose, very sort of percussion heavy. It's a little bit more, a little, a little more similar to what he's doing from one film to the next, but in Black Rain, he just uses so many great things that he uses the authentic Japanese instruments to create a very strong sound for this film overall. He just creates such an incredible sonic landscape that honors the Japanese culture with such an eclectic type of score that just adds in so much. That it just, again, it does have that signature Hans Zimmer verbose power to it, but also has very quiet scenes that just adds in so much beauty and subtlety and everything just like this was an amazing score watching the film just like the more I watch the film just like I need to have this soundtrack it just sounds so amazing I just love the sound of Japanese music that just the different types of woodwinds and the strings and all this type of stuff just it just sounds beautiful to me so much it adds so much to this film just like man Everything is just hit on such a fantastic masterstroke with this film with so many great artists involved with it You couldn't ask for such a perfect film in my opinion And this film just continues to impress with all the action it has that it really is seems like the most Comparable film really Scott has made to the style of film that his brother made Tony Scott with all the crime elements the kind of grit and action sequences and stuff like that but it is still distinctly tonally a Ridley Scott film that is very much focused on the drama and the characters and everything where Tony was a little bit more a little bit more on the sensationalized type of stuff a little bit more of a popcorn film type of thing with a little more to offer than your typical popcorn film but really just focuses in on the emotion and the drama of the characters and the progression of them just adds so much to it and just like the action sequences just look fantastic in this film, just right from the meatpacking district where Conklin is chasing down Sato to the all the motorbikes chases and sequences that the film has. So many great angles and just intense gritty visceralness. I just thought the film just looked great in every single aspect. How they shot every action sequence, how Michael Douglas, you can see this guy is right there in the physicality of these sequences. That he's throwing punches, he's riding the motorcycles. He just looks top notch in this film. He looks like a top line movie star in this film. He just delivers everything. It's just great seeing him in the thick of the action. That you're not pulling back at these long angles, trying to hide a stunt double. It really is Michael Douglas just adding all that gusto into this film. Just he's right there in the thick of things and just executed so.
perfectly in this film. Man, this film just just gets me jacked up, man. You can see that this film just delivers so much on so many different levels, so much substance and thematic material in this film, and so much honor and tribute paid to the Japanese culture to make this such a fulfilling film overall. Man, Black Rain just does it for me. I love this fo film. As I said, I love the ending to this film. I think it's just absolutely awesome on so many levels. Just the action and how it pays off the characters and the storyline. Everything just hits it perfect. There's not a misstep in this film anywhere at all. It's amazing. I think Black Rain is such an amazing film that definitely de deserves more credit. Deserves more, more recognition among really Scott's filmography alongside Blade Runner and Alien and Gladiator, all these big films that people still talk about, this should be right alongside them because it is a pinnacle quality film in really Scott's career, Michael Douglas's, everyone's. They just do absolutely everything. Every artist, every person, every creative individual in this film works so hard against so many different obstacles in this film because it was not easy filming this thing out in Japan where there was a lot of sort of resistance, a little bit of difficulty in getting distinct answers from people of when we could shoot, how we could shoot, and very strictness about how long you could shoot. It was a very restrictive, sort of stressful type of production to really get things going and get things done. But out of that, they made a tremendously fantastic film that I cannot recommend any better or higher or stronger than you can possibly can obviously see from how much I'm passionate about it. Go see this film, especially if you can watch it in HD. Because I had I've had the DVD for several years and I was watching again for the review and I was like, this film could look better. I want to see the detail come out. I want to see the detail pop out in this thing. I just want to see more into the shadows, into the smoky visuals. I just want to see all that just pop out on screen and just be sharper and clearer. I had to get the Blu-ray on this thing to make it look that much better. Man, this film is just fantastic on every level. I love it. Go see it. If you've not seen it, you need to see this film. I love it. If you love gritty crime thrillers, neo-noir type of stuff, this type of Japanese culture, type of mixing with Western culture, it has all these different elements that are just perfect. Perfectly done, written, directed, acted, everything. Before I go rambling on and repeating myself over and over again, the constant gushing and whatnot, Black Rain, two thumbs up, A+, plus, wherever you want to put great on it, 10 out of 10. I love it. I absolutely love it. I didn't find anything wrong with this film at all. If you've seen Black Rain, definitely post your comments below about what you thought about the film, who your favorite performance was in the film, just everything that you thought was the best about this film, or simply, what is your favorite Ridley Scott film of all time? Fantastic filmography from him and Michael Douglas. I got nothing else to say. Just post your comments below about Black Rain, Ridley Scott, Michael Douglas, or whomever. Just love to hear you guys what you have to say about it. If you enjoyed this film, if you enjoyed this review of it, your thumbs up is greatly appreciated. Sharing the links around to get more people involved with it, spread the word about the film itself, definitely do so. I very much encourage it and thank you so much for it. There's a Patreon link below if you guys really want to contribute anything. There's also a PayPal account that if you want to do something outside of that, feel free. Just let me know. And uh, regards to that, man, I'm glad I got this done because it wasn't easy, but... Oh, I feel so elated right now to have talked so passionately about this film and gotten it behind me so that I can go off and talk about another film that is so damn good in John Carpenter's Escape from New York, the new Shout Factory Blu-ray. I'm going to work on getting that review done shortly. A lot of content to watch on this new edition of the film, but it's going to be well worth it because I'm looking forward to it so much. So... Stick around, guys. After this, you got Avengers Age of Ultron and a whole bunch of other stuff coming up this summer. Star Wars. Love the trailer. 
I won't say anything more because this is long enough. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much. So take care, guys. Bye-bye.